Good afternoon, live from Seattle. I'm Michelle Mendoza, your friend in the afternoon. Today we are taking on Health Watch Wednesday and a big health concern, the World Health Organization, is all about Zika. Zika fears have swept the nation and in fact, there are cases of Zika in all but in the last check of four states. Nobody, I guess, gets bitten by Zika in Alaska. So they, they just don't want to make the trip up there. I don't know why Alaska's gorgeous. Idaho, Wyoming, South Dakota, those are the only states that have had no instances of the Zika virus. Even now, Florida, Florida is so bad. The CDC director uh, said that travel to Florida should be heavily advised. There's a Zika travel advisory to Florida. Could last a year. This just came out Monday. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention urged pregnant women to avoid visiting one certain South Florida neighborhood where mosquito-borne cases of Zika virus have really, really emerged. Today, it is Health Watch Wednesday. Live from Seattle, Health Watch Wednesday. And we're going to be taking on the Zika virus, the new vaccine that they're trying to put out, some things that maybe you can be aware of. Come on, this is interesting because there's not just the scare about Zika, but there's myths and there's propaganda surrounding it as well. We're going to reach through all of it trying to find out what is really going on, get you the best information there is on this Health Watch Wednesday and Something that we do that I just don't find anywhere. I I listen for it because I want to know what are some natural things that you can do, things that maybe pharmaceutical companies don't want you to know about, that you can do to protect yourself against Zika and other illnesses. That is what we're taking on today live from Seattle. This is a an interesting story because it has gotten really, really big. And if you don't know anything about Zika, we'll take a listen. You've probably never even heard of it, the Zika virus. It's transmitted by mosquitoes and relatively new to this part of the world. But now Brazil has linked it to a huge increase in birth defects. Because of the relatively mild symptoms, we're talking about a, a low fever, maybe a rash, maybe a headache. It really didn't raise alarm bells when it cropped up in Brazil early last year. But then doctors started to notice a big spike in the number of cases of microcephaly in newborns. That's a neurological disorder that means these babies are born with very small craniums, with a limited brain development, and that over the course of their life, they're likely to need constant care. In 2014, there were just 147 cases of microcephaly. In this latest health emergency, thousands of cases have been reported. I think that's really what propelled Zika to the fear level, is when we think of what it does to babies being born and the smaller than usual heads and just the just the optics of that is horrific and so disturbing that a lot of folks have ra- risen to the, to the point of fear. And mosquitoes are everywhere and everyone's getting bitten and it's scary out there. So that's why. One of the reasons we are taking the Zika virus on today. We also know that the Olympics are right around the corner and Zika is right down there in Rio ready for the games. Tonight, big questions about travel to Brazil, home of one of the biggest outbreaks of the Zika virus and the 2016 Summer Games. With the Olympics six months away and an estimated half million people expected to attend, the real dilemma is for the athletes. Well, not six months away anymore. That's an old soundbite. It's just weeks away. So we're going to be taking this on. First of all, we're going to find out a little bit more about mosquitoes. Zika or no Zika? Nobody likes getting bit by mosquitoes. Do you have that soundbite from Donald Trump? That was so funny. I know we were going to play it later, but Mitch, that was crazy. Yeah, let me get it one second. What was the deal with that? He was at a a news conference? He was just at one of his rallies, and I think he got bit by by a mosquito while he was up on stage, (laughs) and like he does, he just started... Going about he started the mosquito. trumping is what he started exactly. doing. <laughs> you got to get that for me. It, it was just, I liked mosquitoes. I, this, and I thought, well, how perfect we should be 
playing a little bit of Donald Trump and his uh, mosquito phobia today. Uh, We're also going to be speaking in just a few moments with a mosquito expert, but just not any mosquito expert. This man is known as Mosquito Steve. Take a listen. Every job has its challenges, but one North Texas man can't wait to get up in the morning and become a feast for mosquitoes. Mosquito Steve. I am the oldest living, never been married, single heterosexual guy. And I think you're fixing to find out why. He says nobody (laughs) is stupid enough to do what he does every day. Waking up the girls, just waking them up. Come on, girls, breakfast time, breakfast time. He'll stand there. There's one right on my face. That's good. And sit there. Like today, I might get 75. 75, 80, something like that. What? Maybe 90 mosquito bites. He calls the mosquitoes friends. These mosquitoes don't act like the mosquitoes in cages. After all, he's and so, uh, given lots know, of blood to them. Yeah, you can see. And that blood that they just sucked out of me is what makes those eggs viable. Mosquito Steve. <laughs> Mosquito Steve is actually on Live from Seattle. Mosquito Steve, welcome to Live from Seattle. Uh, thanks for having me. I love uh, that sound bite. <laughs> you I mean you just can't the find it? Donald Trump thing. Okay, here you go. This is for you, the Donald Trump thing. This is okay. uh, this is for Mosquito Steve. Ooh, there was a mosquito. I don't want mosquitoes around me. I don't like mosquitoes. I don't like those mosquitoes. I never did. <laughs> I need to use those in my next ad. <laughs> There, there you go. So what, I, what I'm what i surprised at, if you haven't found a girl that likes to go out and get bitten by mosquitoes with you. There's got to yeah, be someone well, listening today. Ladies, if you're listening, 800-955-8200 will hook you up. There you go. Oh, my gosh. And I'll move to Seattle in a heartbeat. Y'all don't have mosquitoes up there, do you? Oh, we do. We really, we really do. But uh, they're not as bad as some areas. They really, yeah. So, and apparently we've had a few cases of Zika. And so Zika has really propelled the whole mosquito issue to the forefront. And what I think folks don't really know about mosquitoes, there's like 3,000 varieties of mosquitoes and only about 175 are in the United States. And even less of those actually bite you. Yes. Yeah. So right now, actually, and it's only females. So right now we are, that's why I call them girls, and I was talking about that breakfast, because I get out there early in the morning, and here I am for breakfast. So, <laughs> uh, but the uh, the ones that we got to worry about right now are the 80s Egypti and 80s Albopictus, but you guys don't get, um, I don't believe the 80s species goes, at least not the Albopictus and Egypti will go as far north as Seattle. So, uh, but... Here's the problem. There, there, there are Culex mosquitoes that can pass Zika on from a human to another human. Mm-hmm. So they may not be be able to um, do an outbreak like we have in Florida, but they can pass the disease on. And the Culex species is the one that's responsible for the spread of West Nile virus in the U.S. And so I'm I'm quite sure that the Culex species is all around you up there. When we think of getting mosquito bites and mosquito-borne illnesses like Zika, and we'll find out more more in depth what Zika is and what we should fear and what we shouldn't fear from it as we continue on life from Seattle. But in the meantime, talking about mosquito-borne illnesses, there's a lot of folks that want to genetically change the mosquito, and we have this big bug problem, and if we could just eradicate them biting us, well, then maybe everything will be wonderful and there'll be peace on earth but man that sounds like you're just kind of playing god with the mosquito i think the fear on the genetic genetically modified disease if you just say the genetically modified mosquito is that uh, we will create the super mosquito and i think that is what will happen so mosquitoes adapt really really fast so uh their larval stage in north texas used to be two weeks but we went through a drought and so in a few short years their larval stage went from two weeks to five days. Now, that's amazing. Oh, wow. Could you imagine women going from being pregnant nine months to only four and a half months pregnant? In I take that. Years? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so they adapt really quickly, and that's one of the reasons why they've, um, like in Florida, they're having trouble getting rid of the mosquitoes because the pesticides aren't working. The mosquitoes have built up a resistance to it, and that's pretty common. That's what I've been trying to tell people for years and why we make the products we make, because they they don't become resistant to them. That's a lot of why you're out there getting eaten by mosquitoes every day is that you're trying to develop 
a repellent that is natural? Because a lot of these, we'll be talking about this as well today, what we're doing to protect ourselves from bugs is so dangerous to ourselves and to other bugs. We wonder why bees aren't pollinating. Well, let's see. We just decide we're just going to spray everything and kill off. It doesn't just kill off a couple of mosquitoes carrying around their suitcase full of Zika. It's killing everything. And, and you know, we sometimes make a bigger problem than the original problem when we try to solve the problem. So one thing that you're doing, and, and just to explain, because people want to know, okay, so mosquito, Steve goes out there and gets eaten by mosquitoes every day. You're doing it for a purpose. Yes. Yeah. So what I do, I've done hundreds and hundreds of tests this way, and I continue to, in fact, I'm uh, when we hang up the phone, guess what I'm doing tonight? Yay. <laughs> so I will tell you, I get really depressed on these days. It's real hard to keep my attitude up because it is not fun. I don't do this out of enjoyment. So I Well, I'm at least glad there. for that, and I think that's yeah. going to help you in the dating <laughs> department, too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I stand outside. I count how many mosquitoes land on me. What I'll do is I'll do a pre-count, and then I'll spray the repellent all over my body, and then I'll continue to count uh, for sometimes as much as six hours. Now, and, the interesting uh, thing about this uh, is uh, what I've heard from you is that mosquitoes behave differently in the real world than they do in a Petri dish or in a, in a controlled environment in the laboratory. Is that true? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, in fact, like DEET, for instance, you know, they're claiming that it works for six hours. Well, I've done dozens of tests on DEET, and DEET breaks down in about 45 minutes consistently in every case. Wow. Uh, there are some, some um, more concentrated versions of it. There's actually only a couple of concentrated versions, and even those um, at two hours fall under 90%. And so our goal, those are... That gives us our baseline. If our products fall below 90%, we throw them out and we start over. So our, um, like our spray on repellent lasts for um, hours and hours and hours. At three hours, we're still above 90%. Mm -hmm. So we're 50% at least more effective than some of the the better versions. Well, and and I know you work with a lot of things like essential oils, which are are the very things that God made out there. It it does. And they're they're not like DEET. You really want to have to put that on every 45 minutes. I mean, that's that chemical stuff. I don't know. I'm I'm a little bit leery of, but no one wants to get chewed on by a bunch of mosquitoes unless of course you're mosquito steve if you want to find out more about mosquito steve you can go to mosquito steve.com that's pretty unforgettable and i do want to encourage you in the dating department you know since we brought it up i actually i i keep bees and so I go out there with my girls all the time, and uh, I I actually do get stung on purpose. I've told the listening audience this, and it's a true story. I had rheumatoid arthritis when I was in my teens and 20s where I could almost not walk. I went to a naturopath. They said, oh, yeah, we can cure that. I'm like, what? They shot me with uh, apotherapy, which is just bee venom. It's just like getting a Uh shot. In three weeks, I was healed. In three weeks, wow. I could walk. I didn't. Ha- I haven't had symptoms since, and my seasonal allergies uh, tend to go away if I get stung by a bee. So it, it's kind of magical. So you know, there may be maybe there's another bee girl out there that would like to meet the mosquito <laughs> man, and it could just be you know, love in the skies right there. Well, I'll tell you. So I actually <laughs> we have a client that raises honeybees. And we spray treat his yard, and we do misting. I actually don't do it. I sell the juice, and one of my service providers do. But we spray his yard, and he still he has no. It's no effect on the honeybees because awesome. our stuff is all repellent. We don't kill anything. And you're right. If you kill anything, if you kill mosquitoes, you're going to kill bees too. Yeah. And so, um, and now there's new studies showing that. Uh, bees sperm count is 40% less than what it was before due to neonicotinoids, which is another type of pesticide, one of the most widely used ones across the world. And see, this is why what you're doing, going out there, getting bit (laughs) by mosquitoes to test out uh, natural ways to solve some of our issues, man. That's uh, you're you're kind of a hero, you know. You really are. You're a hero. <laughs> I don't believe that, but I tell you. So the one night, there's <laughs> only just the one night that was really bad, and I was doing a control, 
and I had over 900 bites in one night. And I was putting up my equipment at the end of the day, and uh, and my, the thought crossed my mind, just end it all now. And I thought, you know what? There you go. So you get 900 mosquito poisons in you, and you're going to want to kill yourself. And that's, I mean, it just came out of nowhere. Just kill yourself now. And so, but uh, but for me, I can oh. go put hot water on the bites and then put cortisone on them, and it's like they weren't even there. And so I think that's one of those God-given things. I think I was very blessed with the ability to withstand the bites. I hope that's what this is. I hope I'm not just being stupid and I'm fixing the crust <laughs> from all the others. Either way, <laughs> you're happy, and that's what really matters, isn't it? I mean, really, in the end. <laughs> Mosquito Steve, you are a joy. Thanks so much for joining us on Live from Seattle. And, of course, you can find Mosquito Steve at MosquitoSteve.com. God bless you, my friend. Thank you, Michelle. Y'all have a great evening. <laughs> you too. Ooh, there was a mosquito. I don't want mosquitoes around me. I don't like mosquitoes. I don't like those mosquitoes. I never <laughs> did.